So let's go to our data sheet and let's just search for decoupling. Power supply decoupling should be performed as shown in figure nine. So let's click on there, figure nine, power supply scheme. So we have 100 nanofarads and one 4.7 microfarad uh, capacitors in parallel, two VDD and VDDA pin. Sure, I like to do that decoupling in the corner. So let's make it nice and neat. Let's press the rectangle tool. Let's just add a little bit, a little box here. Press escape to exit the uh, draw function. Double click the rectangle edges to get the uh, rectangle properties. Uh, go to style. You can choose what you want, but I'll go with dashed. Uh, let's add some text here. Decoupling capacitors. We can do a multiply by two to get the um, twice as big of a text here. Put that somewhere around here. Add a symbol. I press C. I get the capacitor right away. One was 4.7 micro. Let's copy. Let's actually edit the symbol because I know it'll be off sync a little bit. Let's copy this and the other one was 100 nano. Great. We can copy the ground and let's add the 3.3 volt node here. Uh, let's sh let's add it some clarifying texture. VDD. So we only have one power pin. VDD. So the capacitors that this pin needs are going to be sitting very close to the package. Um, I like to add decoupling capacitors down here. Let's actually extend this a little bit, give us some more space. And let's center the decoupling capacitors. So these two are going to sit very close to the VDD pin to help us filter out and act as current sources whenever the need, current need for the microcontroller fluctuates. <clears throat> okay, so it's looking pretty good so far. Let me see if this is everything Okay, we still have these pins here. So we're not gonna use the 3.3 volt pin. So we can now connect those. Let's connect to ground real quick. Great. Um, swim. Let's search for that in the data sheet. Nothing. Swim pin serial wire debug. Swim communication protocol and debug, debug module. Single wire interface module. Okay, so let's just using one wire. Okay, we'll use serial wire debug and not the swim protocol so we can add a no connect flag on that pin as well. One thing I like to do is to add test points. So there are a couple of things that are of interest to us. So let's add a symbol and let's just search test points. Great, and here is one test point small. Let's just go with the test regular test point. This will help us test and measure voltages and stuff like that when the actual PCB has been ordered and delivered. So let's add one test point at 3.3 volts so to check if our 3.3 volts are okay. Let's add one test point on the five volt as well. Okay, the four way connection is typically a little wonky. So we can do that here, it's no big deal. So this is our five volt test point. It's our 3.3 volt test point. Is there anything else we want to test? You can add test points for the control nodes. If you want, you could add a test point for the serial wire, for the reset pins. Let's do that, just to be safe. So our reset test point, not reset test point. our control pin test points. And basically what test points are, are just little pads of exposed copper that you can probe directly with a multimeter or oscilloscope. So let's save this. It's looking quite nice. I think we have, so we will get five volts from our V2. It'll go through our AP2127. It'll go into the MCU. We have our decoupling capacitor scheme. We have our not reset scheme. We have our LEDs, our communication. Unless we want additional functionality, uh, maybe use some other pins here. We're actually s um, fairly done with this simple project. Um, usually if you're, it's always good to annotate with some more texts. Um, should probably add the voltage drops. Uh, voltage drops, LED, red, 2.2, typical, 3.2, typical, blue, 3.2. Typical. This is good to have when you come back to the schematic some a few weeks later. You'll not remember this in your head, most likely. Uh, so all the things that you're probably going to forget, you might want to put down as some kind of comment on uh, your schematic. Okay, so I've done some research on the reset pin. So what most people have done is just put a switch, a uh, mechanical switch that you will press and it'll ground this node. But we can still keep our schematic like this 
the reason why is because we can use an electrical pulse here to ground it. So whenever we want to use a reset, we can just touch the reset pin with 3.3 volts. And we can do that with the SD-Link V2. So we don't have to change anything, it's just a note. Also, I probably think that if the reset on the ST-Link V2 has a pull-up. So if we go to the data sheet of, so this is the schematic of the ST-Link V2. This is the STM32, it runs on, uh, we go to its data sheet and we see it has IO port characteristics. And the pull-up is also typically 40 kilo ohms here. So if we do a voltage divider, 3.3, five, um, this will actually not toggle a high pulse. Um, so if you want to use the reset functionality, you would have, we would have to take away the pull down, but I've read on some forums that it has issues with the reset, the reset being something that is connected to the swim protocol. So from what I've heard, it doesn't actually work. So we will, we can keep this schematic the way it is and just use a voltage pulse on the reset. Alternatively, we could put a mechanical switch in there. That's totally up to you. I think I'm just gonna keep it this way. And whenever I want to reset, I will just touch the reset header um, with 3.3 volts. So yeah, I just thought I'd update you guys on that research I did. Okay, so the next stage is to start routing this. And in order to do so, we need to check that we have reference designators on everything. And this is a reference designator. It's a Q4, Q is for transistor. So this is the fourth transistor in the circuit. We have an option here, fill in schematic symbol reference designator. So we can click on there and this will annotate our schematic for us. And we can sort by X position, Y position. Uh, let's reset existing annotations, free numbers after zero, that's great. And let's annotate, the annotation is complete. So we have R1, Q1, and it'll go from X so we have Q2, Q3, Q4. All right, so we can save now that our schematic is nice and annotated. We need to move on to an electrical rules check. Click here, let's run. Okay, we have two errors. Let's take a look. Uh, the input power pin is not driven by any output power pins. I don't think we need to worry about these errors. So delete that marker. We can delete those markers. Okay, so it's not a problem. Let's delete all markers, close, and finally, we need to assign footprints to everything. So there's a tool for that. It's called the footprint assignment tool. We'll click and we see that the only footprints we have are for the power package and the MCU. So a couple of things. Uh, so let's put footprints on the decoupling capacitors. And keep in mind, since this is a board we are just using for prototyping and learning, uh, we don't wanna use too small of a package. So 0201 is probably going to be too small. Uh, we might do fine with uh, 0603 or 0402. Um, so let's use those type of packages and we will search. Um, let's actually begin to filter some of these away. So let's filter here and filter here. Capacitor, surface mount device, yes. So 0603, let's just go with 0402 and just double click and it'll automatically assign that footprint. And all capacitors can have 0402s, that's okay. The LED ARBG, okay. So this is gonna be a little bit more challenging, but you can select arbitrarily. Let's go with the first one and then click here view the selected footprint in the footprint viewer. That'll give us another little window. And in this window, we can actually compare with the um, data sheet from the manufacturer. And let's take a look at the data sheet from the manufacturer. This is the recommended solder pattern. So we have the package dimensions here. So let's go back to the footprint viewer. Let's use the measuring tool here. And let's actually measure. So the pad should be 0.8 millimeters. We have 0.9, that's fine. It's pretty uh, close. Between these should be 0.7, so we got 0.9. And between here should be 0 0.2, 0 0.4. Okay, so this package is a little bit big. So let's go back to the tool here. Let's choose another one. Okay, so we don't have the footprint, so that's okay. We can actually create our new one. Okay, so our LED doesn't have a footprint, which is totally fine. Um, let's go back to the KiCad menu here. Let's go to the footprint editor. Create new empty footprint. That's where we're going. Now the name, LED ARGB, let's call it that. SMD, that's right. Okay, so we're in here. 
I press M and I move this a little bit out of the way. So there are a couple of layers here. They are going to dictate how this part is gonna... For example, the silk screen is just text that'll come with the footprint. So we can draw kind of a rectangle like so in the silk screen layer. So this will be just like a paint on the PCB. It's not the footprint itself, but if we go to the copper layer here, here we're actually creating a pad or here. So clicking here, we're actually adding a pad and this is the footprint, the copper footprint where we're gonna solder on the LED on. Okay, so um, let's follow this schematic then. Uh, let's double click the pad and change the size. Pad size X, let's shoot 0.8, and Y is 0.65. Okay, so this is the pad size. Just place it somewhere here. And we can copy this and place it up like that. We're gonna need to alter, so this is gonna be one, two, I double click to enter the properties again and three, four. Great. And here's my measuring tool. We need to have 0 0.07, 0 0.55. There you go. Change the grid. Let's measure 0 0.725. Okay, 0 0.8. Wait, it needs to be 0 0.7, right? There we go. And 0 0.02 between these ones. So that's here. There we go. One, two. Okay, so 0 0.7 between them, 0 0.2 here. 0.8 here, 0.65 here. Excellent, this is the footprint we need. Let's shrink the silk screen to be something like that. It's a little bit more appropriate. Okay, so there's our footprint for the, it's our recommended solder pattern with the LEDs. Great, now we just need to save that. New library here. Let's do project based then. My, my project. Okay, okay, here we go. We can save it in there. There you go, my project. Okay, now this footprint is in there. Perfect. Let me just measure one more time, see if these are evenly s distributed. Yes, 350, 350, point one. Yeah, it's symmetrical around the origin. This is great, perfect. Now we can exit, now we can double click, now we can find the footprint. Um, we can filter here for my project, and here it is, double click. Great, we just built a, our own footprint, assigned it to our part, and click OK. There it is. Let's return to the footprint assignment tool and let's see what else do we have. Okay, we're gonna hand solder on these. Okay, so this is a connector. We're looking for an eight pin header. Pin header 1.27 maybe. We're looking for vertical SMD. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Press show 3D viewer. Yes, this is the one that we're after. Double click. Okay, so we have our end mosses. High speed switching, silicon end channel and moss. I think we're going with these ones. And what package is this? Package names, SSM. What package is that? SOT416. Okay, so end moss, SOT416. Yeah, excellent. One, two, three, four. Um, resistors, same thing. Let's go with SMDs 0402s. Um, okay, so we have our test points. I'm looking for some kind of okay, pad. Yes, we can do one millimeter diameter. Is that small? Guess so, maybe 1.5. Okay, 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 double click. Great, that's every footprint in our schematic has been assigned. Apply, okay, great. Let's save and let's move on to the PCB, so. Press the open PCB and board editor button. 